stand by who I am and my decisions that I make in the game and outside of the game operating with integrity is who I am in this world. And, you know, there were things that I didn't want to compromise, um, a potential vote number from someone that I didn't align with was not worth it to me. Like a BB moment, which is like a beautiful black moment. Did we get any of those in this episode? Black. We have a chaotic five moment of the chaotic five moment. And you're watching Black Fi Reality. Black Fi Baddies. And those who love us. Hello, baddies. You are watching and or listening to the Black Fi Reality podcast, a place for Black Fi Baddies and those who love us. I talked to our second ev- evicted house guest of Big Brother 26. But first, I have a few announcements. First of all, we made 1K on YouTube. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to the YouTube channel. I started this channel a year ago. It was a huge goal of mine to reach 1K+. plus. And after 120-something videos, finally did it. And it feels so good. And the plan is to continue putting out content covering entertainment. So with that in mind, I recently talked to Chappelle of Recap Kickback. We had to talk about the Angela Murray versus Queen, I believe, Martin of it all. Uh... We had a lot of thoughts, so I hope you check in, listen. I might have some more. I will probably have Easy Izzy Gleacher on at some point in this season and more people on to discuss the big highlights of the season. So I hope you subscribe to the podcast for that as well as the exit interviews. Other than that, me and Chappelle also talked about Love Island USA. He has joined in on watching for the first time with season six. So the video is about the finale plus what has happened after the Islanders left. I highly recommend, even if you're a new person, because it is basically me explaining all of the drama and more of what the show is like to Chappelle. And just letting you know what's coming up, we are going to be covering Love Island UK, which premieres this week, and Quita Tinsley is going to be back as my co-host. So excited about that. So I hope you also watch along with us, or just listen and watch. Also a reminder that this YouTube is available so you can always watch our episodes, but we're also on your podcast apps. So if you ever on the go, can't stop, watch a video, you can subscribe to us on there. And the new thing I should be doing is asking for reviews. So please review the podcast wherever you listen to it. And that's about it. Now, going into our interview with Lisa. Bye, guys. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. I am Nicole Weaver from Black by Reality. And my first question for you is that your conflict with Angela started with your discussion at the hammock. You told Angela you had to spend the day doing damage control. You're very honest with her in a game where people tell you what you want to hear and backstab you, as you know, by your blind side. Do you wish at all that you faked it more in that conversation with Angela? No, not at, not at all. I stand by who I am and my decisions that I make in the game and outside of the game operating with integrity is who I am in this world. And, you know, there were things that I didn't want to compromise, um, a potential vote number from someone that I didn't align with was not worth it to me. And that's how I chose to play the game. And that's what I was transparent about. Okay. My second question. There's a lot of processing that happens once you leave the house. 
people watched Angela make fun of your walk and calling you names and you spoke up for yourself, but Angela didn't apologize. You then broke down in the storage room. So what has it been like to leave the house, process your real feelings um, about how Angela treated you, but then see that some viewers still find humor in some of her actions? You know what? My feelings are real inside the house and everything that I experienced there was authentic, including all of the feelings that I shared, even the painful ones that were hard to experience knowing that everyone's saying this. But I, I think that being vulnerable shows people who you are and we need to see more representation of that. So I... I was just myself. I felt all my feels. Um, you know, we're out of, I'm out of the house now and there is stuff to process, but whatever I'm feeling in the moment is real, you know, and valid. So people that find humor in it, that's on, that's on them. I did not find anything that was being done humorous. I felt a lot of pain experiencing it. But, you know, within pain, you can have transformation. It's how you transform that game into fighting to win. And I played to win. I played the best game possible. I played the game by being myself and following my heart and following my mind and honoring myself. And for that, I'm proud. Thanks. Do you hope to be able to find humor in it one day or? You know what? I take ownership. I, I love the word Tinkerbell. You know, Tinkerbell is a fairy that's cute and positive and fun and has lots of glitter, obviously. So like, yes, you can call me Tinkerbell as long as it's in a respectful way with intent. Um, but I'm going to take ownership of it. I mean, the things that I was picked on and bullied for were my walk. So that just means I have a great strut. Um, I had my smile. I was told not to smile. I'm a smiley, positive person. And thank you, Crest White Strip, for making my pearly whites extra shiny on TV. And, you know, my glitter. I'm not going to go anywhere without it. I bring it into my brands, Place by Lisa and Batch Best Friend. Everyone loves a good garnish. And just put it on yourself for some extra shine. So, you know, I take ownership of who I am and that is my control. And, you know, that is who I'm going to show to the world. Some people like it, some people don't. But, you know, I have a lot of self-love and maybe there's one, two or in the world that find themselves in Is All right. So over at the Black by Reality podcast, when we do recap shows, we usually have a chaotic buy moment. If I had to pick, I would definitely pick you and your glitter being part of that. But can you walk me through, you have glitter, you're packing up for Big Brother. How is the glitter supposed to play into your strategy? And did it come out as planned? Or would you do it differently if you were asked back? I wouldn't do anything differently. Glitter is a part of who I am. Always garnish yourself. Also, glitter is part of my businesses, Place by Lisa and Batch Best Friend. I put glitter on food. People literally hire me and they think it's the ultimate vibe. So, you know, it didn't quite land in the Big Brother house, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to change who I am for anyone. And I will always carry some with me. I will say, though, I did leave my edible glitter with my roommate, Brooklyn, for her to garnish. I know that she cooked a lot in the house and people loved her food. So I thought it would be a little extra sparkle to her, you know, big potato bar. So, you know, she puts that extra butter, extra glitter, a little green onion, maybe some chopped bacon in there, and that will be extra delicious. Um, I did think that when I gave it to her, she was like, oh, don't be silly. Like, you're going to come back. You got this. I'll see you soon kind of thing. But little did I know what was cooking up there, sleeves. So, you know, Brooklyn, I do want that edible glitter back, but, you know, I'm just going to order some more or make my own line. So we'll see about that. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll keep checking in on what you're doing post season. Uh, I hope you have a good one, Lisa. Thank you. Say blessed and vibes all the way. <laughs> you. Bye. Bye.